We like nothing more than a mystery, and one of our favourite kind of mysteries are the ones that originate online, where something seemingly innocuous explodes into a full-blown conspiracy that sends people down a never-ending internet rabbit hole. Well, here we'll be looking at five online creepy mysteries that spawned endless theories and explanations, but offered no real answers. Before we get started, don't forget that for just $2 per month, you can support us on Patreon and get exclusive access to videos we do not upload to YouTube, including documentaries and Murderous Minds videos. Our most recent one was a Murderous Minds documentary on Joseph Mengler, the Angel of Death. We put so much time and effort into these documentaries, and for just $2 per month, you can have exclusive access to them. We're currently working on a murderous minds on Jim Jones, and also a documentary called World War AI, Rise of the Machines, which is about the possibility of artificial intelligence taking over the world. Don't forget to become patrons for just $2 per month by clicking the link in the description or in the comment section, and helping us out tremendously for videos that are deemed unad friendly. Thanks for listening, and now it's time to hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. Who is Nine Mother Nine Horse Nine Eyes Nine, and what was he trying to tell us? On April 21st, 2016, a Reddit user called Nine Mother Nine Horse Nine Eyes Nine posted a disjointed snippet of text in a comment on a post titled The Cover of George Orwell's 1984 Becomes Less Censored with Wear. The seemingly random comment started a phenomena that sent Redditors down a cryptic, often disturbing rabbit hole. Now, most of you have probably heard of Project MKUltra, the CIA's mind control program, in which human subjects were used to identify and develop drugs to be used in interrogations to weaken the individual thinking and force confessions out of them. The program has for many years been the subject of conspiracy theories about what really went on. So the claim in this Reddit post about restraint bed portals and flesh interfaces, things that hadn't been mentioned before, piqued people's interest. Over the next few months, the user scattered similar posts all across Reddit, submitting them randomly to threads where they were only vaguely related to the original subject. He posted on subjects such as Vietnam, Elizabeth Bathory, the Treblinka concentration camp, Humpback Wales, the Manson family, and LSD but his main focus seemed to be on the flesh interfaces being built somehow by shadowy programs. Reddit sleuths started to piece together the macabre accounts and the phenomena developed into a mini sensation and gradually an intriguing science fiction horror story was beginning to emerge. This was skillfully and beautifully written from multiple actual historical perspectives, revealing a nightmarish tale revolving around the so-called flesh interfaces and humankind's attempts to study them. The plot featured terrifying space portals, Nazis, LSD experiments gone wrong, conspiracy theories, and an omnipresent entity called Mother. The story spanned from a World War II concentration camp in the 1930s to a future Atlanta in 2030. The series became known as the Interface Series. Such was the interest this user caused that cult fandom hastily built a wiki page to study and catalogue the mysterious tale creating a timeline of known events on a subreddit that was created with its own dedicated discussion thread where enthusiasts even developed an audiobook. In the sub, moderator Gabby Cat claimed to have worked with MHE on ideas and edits and is the main mod and MHE spokeswoman and point of contact on the subject. However, fans were desperate to know how the enigmatic Nine Mother, Nine Horse, Nine Eyes Nine was and soon the writer started to reveal more about himself. In a now deleted post, he described himself as a 30-something American male who was an alcoholic with a history of substance abuse. The revelation prompted both Vice and Gizmodo to speculate that Reddit user Yu Anata Pai, a prolific conspiracy theorist and moderator of the Shrug Life Syndicate, a subreddit of similar themes including psychedelics, psychosis, and synchronicity, is in fact the writer of the story, although so far this has not been proven. Eventually, some became skeptical that they were being given the runaround and the whole thing was an elaborate marketing stunt. They even linked it to the Netflix series Stranger Things that was about to debut around the time the Interface series appeared, and they were quick to point out some of the similarities with the plot, and many still believe that MHE was or still is a writer for Stranger Things. 
However, the key to the interface series seemed to be the flash interface. Readers were confused about exactly what it meant, and MHE responded to that question. Then, on July 19, 2016, they responded with a final post, bringing to an end the interface series, but not an end to the mystery behind it, or its meaning. We do not know what to make of it all, but if this user is watching this, we'd love to hear from them to put an end to the speculation and rabbit hole that this dug, and find out the true meaning behind the interface series. Deeper. Now this next one we have covered before, but since then, there has been an anonymous update, as well as many more unanswered questions, so we thought we would revisit it with our latest thoughts. On May 16, 2016, a YouTube channel was created, called Deeper. A few days later, on the 20th of May, five very short videos were uploaded to the channel, and a coded link was posted on 4chan that attracted curious viewers. The titles were cryptic, and when translated into Latin, spelled sunt, meaning followed by. Take a look at the first 18 second video that drew viewers down a rabbit hole, with an outcome they were not expecting. The next four videos posted on the same day were equally perplexing. The second one was an 18 second clip of a ceiling fan titled Around, followed by another clip of a fan titled Culmas, which translated from Latin to English means stalker. The fourth one that day was titled BSHLK. It showed a smashed light bulb with a song by Daniel Johnson titled Poor You playing in the background. Eagle-eyed viewers were able to decode this after realizing BSHLK was a visionaire cipher and the key was poor you, which translated to metum, which is Latin for alarm. The theme of these videos seemed to be taking a sinister turn and the last video posted on the 20th of May was titled here and showed a 17 second clip of a field. Viewers speculated it was located in Colorado or Texas. The next day, a video titled Listen was posted again, showing an empty field, but this time a siren sound could be heard, and at the end of the 27 clip, there was a weird distorted sound that when put through a spectrometer, revealed the name Stephanie Ann Bauman. Stephanie Ann Bauman was a 15-year-old girl who was found dead on October 28, 1980. Her body was found in a ditch in Colorado. Investigators believed that prior to her demise, she had been chased by a car and collapsed exhausted into the ditch. The case and circumstances surrounding her death remain unsolved. The video and subsequent videos continued with similar hidden messages and sinister themes, each offering a coded clue using either hexadecimal, Latin, or other ciphers. In the video titled 25, the name Darcy Anderson was revealed through Caesar cipher. 28-year-old Darcy Anderson was another murder victim, whose body was found in the trunk of her own car that had been abandoned in a muddy alley in Denver. Her demise remains unsolved. In the slightly unnerving video titled Mortem, viewers suggested the name Edith Beneath Lenners was the hidden clue. Edith was a 38-year-old mother from Colorado who disappeared in 1995. As with the previous two people, her case also remains unsolved. Soon after Deeper posted in the channel description another series of numbers, along with the coordinates 38.933529. The numbers were translated through a cipher and read Karen Denise Aguilera. Karen was a 23-year-old whose body was found on May the 10th, 1988, in a field near Falcon Highway. Her case remains unsolved. Perhaps even more disturbing is that the coordinates take you there, to the exact place Karen's body was found. Shortly after the coordinates were displayed, a video featuring another ceiling fan with a strange title was translated through a cipher, spout the words, I loved them all. After this video, the quality of the video was upped, although the content was just as disturbing. A lot of the clips featured songs from Daniel Johnston, and every video seemed to have a clue or message. Over the next two years, the uploads were sporadic, and some have since been deleted, but all the videos seem to have been linked to unsolved crimes, and viewers became convinced Deeper was a serial killer, leaving clues about his victims. 
In some of the last videos uploaded, many viewers allude to the fact that the owner might be dying and the whole thing was a deathbed confession. One of the latest videos uploaded to the channel was called AKTLASA and at the end had a code in the distorted audio that when put through a spectrometer spelt out 700 block Mariposa Street, the site of another cold case murder victim. On December 10th, 2018, Deeper did a live stream with just a black screen and a strange phonic Morse code combination playing. This was decoded as possibly saying receive. The last video posted to the channel was on June 17th, 2019. The decoded link in the somber post was this. Nothing has been posted since, and whether this person is dead or not is unknown. But we're keeping an eye on the channel to see if there are any more uploads. We're not sure if this was all an automated reality game or an art project, as some do suspect, but if it was, it was incredibly distasteful. What's your thoughts on this one? The origins and motive behind Sad Satan. This next one is a PC game that may or may not have existed, although we suspect it did. The game called Sad Satan is a PC game built with Terra Engine. It was first reviewed on the YouTube channel Obscure Horror Corner on June 25th, 2015. Following the reviews, the channel's video of the game went viral. The channel's owner went on to give an interview with gaming website Kotuka, where he claimed to have downloaded the game from a Tor hidden service after receiving a tip from an anonymous subscriber. The subscriber, in turn, claimed to have found the link via a deep web internet forum from a user known as ZayK. Initially, some followers were dubious of the game, fearing it may contain gore or CP, as both are common on deep web games. However, the owner of Obscure Horror Corner assured viewers that in his playthroughs, the game had not contained any such material. Following the interview, the subreddit Sad Satan was formed to discuss the game, and it was quickly realised the Onion address provided by Obscure Horror Corner was invalid. After the discovery, the Obscure Horror Corner owner appeared again on Kotuka, claiming that the link was purposefully given in error since the game did in fact contain graphic material. The revelation prompted Kotoku to apologise for not checking the details of the game's authenticity and content. However, around the same time, a new version of the game was posted to 4chan by someone claiming to be ZK, declaring that Obscure Horror Corner had not been showing their viewers the true Sad Satan. Members of the 4chan community downloaded this new version and attempted to play it, but soon started complaining that it was causing their computers to malfunction, and users who did manage to play the game, they dubbed the clone said it made them feel nauseous and unwell and they confirmed it did contain disgusting images. Suspiciously, around the same time, Obscure Horror Corner abandoned his YouTube channel for unknown reasons, and nothing has been uploaded to it since the Sad Satan controversy. A little creepy, but nothing to suggest anything sinister is going on. However, as soon as the gaming community heard about this mysterious game, they scrambled to try and download and play it. A lot of the popular YouTube gaming channels attempted to review it, including PewDiePie, but what they discovered in the real game was disturbing. As they progressed through the monochromatic corridors with the weird background number station music blaring, it soon became apparent that this was one sick game. Along the corridors were disturbing images and horrific photos from crime scenes. One was of serial killer Richard Cottingham's victim other equally disgusting images flashed up, including one of a soldier's face mutilated by a bullet, and other disturbing things that we cannot mention. Also scattered throughout the game were photos of hideous child predators, and a flash image of JFK riding in the car just prior to his assassination. It appears the game is alluding to the horrors of child abuse and the possibility of people in power knowing but doing nothing about it. It's also speculated that Sad Satan is linked to the YouTube upload called Sad Sad Satan. This is equally weird and seems to hint at murders and child abuse committed by people in masks. 
although we think that one is a whole nother story, best saved for another video. There has been speculation that the game was in fact created by the owner of the channel, Obscure Horror Corner, to gain subscribers, and that the deep web story was a complete fabrication, and others claim that Zeke and the owner of Obscure Horror Corner are the same person. Although this is not something we necessarily believe, and we think Obscure Horror Corner stumbled upon the tame version of the game before realizing its true content, he then sought to distance himself from it by abandoning his channel. Most agree, without the images, there would be no controversy. It's a pretty weak game, it's the mystery behind it that intrigued people, although we think they got more than they bargained for. If any of you are interested, Obscure Horror Corner is still an active YouTube channel, although like we said, nothing has been uploaded since the Sad Satan controversy. As for the real game, Sad Satan seems to straddle the line between myth and reality, and despite there being clips out there showing gameplay, no one is really sure whether it did or does actually exist as a genuine game. However, if it is a real game, then we highly recommend you do not search for it, let alone play it. And if you've already downloaded it, considering the disturbing images in the game, it could lead to you getting questioned by the authorities. Marina Joyce Internet Hysteria In 2016, Save Marina Joyce started trending on Twitter and turned into a social media frenzy. And although most of the people retweeting the message had probably never heard of Marina Joyce, they were intrigued enough to find out more. What they would have discovered was that Marina Joyce was a teenage beauty vlogger who started a channel in 2010, vlogging from her bedroom and various other rooms in her family's home. Her upbeat, innocent, quirky, and happy-go-lucky personality appealed to teenagers, and by 2016, she had amassed a dedicated following of around 700,000 subscribers. Her channel consisted of makeup tutorials, fashion, and how-to videos, all delivered in Marina's spiritual, slightly off-the-wall style. However, in the weeks leading up to the Save Marina Joyce hashtag, fans had become concerned for the vlogger's welfare. The then 19-year-old Marina didn't seem her normal happy, carefree self, and her most dedicated fans, who had watched her videos from the start, noticed a definite shift in her behaviour. Her delivery had become weird and starey, with shifty off-camera glances. Their concerns were compounded when in July 2016, she posted a video called First Date Outfits. In the video that has since been taken down, Marina appears nervous, wide-eyed, and forced, and most worrying of all, 13 seconds into the video, the teenager appears to whisper the words, help me. And this is the dress that I'm wearing. However, perhaps the most shocking thing for viewers was the visible bruises that could be seen on her arm. A few days after the first Date Outfits video, in response to the concern her viewers were expressing in the comments, Marina posted a questions and answers video, in which she insisted that she hadn't changed at all. But the video did little to curb concern for her, as again she stumbles with her words, talks fast, and seems jittery. Shortly before this video, on July 26, 2016, Marina Joyce tweeted out, Meet me, Bethnal Green, at 6.30am if you would like to join partying with me at that event. Bring a friend so you don't get lost. A lot of people found this tweet weird and creepy, since it was about attending a non-existent party at 6.30 in the morning. Several people freaked out and made the Twitter hashtag Save Marina Joyce that trended in just under three hours. After the Save Marina Joyce frenzy, the first Date Outfits video got 43 million views, and her subscriber count skyrocketed. Such was the hysteria that people even went as far as to believe she was being held hostage by someone, and thousands of teenagers revealed that they couldn't sleep and were shaking from their belief that she had been kidnapped or was being held hostage. They started tweeting that it had caused them to have anxiety or panic attacks. Such was the concern, and in order to make sure she was safe, the police were contacted. However, after visiting her home, the police later confirmed that she was safe and well, denouncing all claims of a possible kidnapping. 
In the aftermath of hashtag Save Marina Joyce, she tried to clear up things about recent events by doing several interviews, even one where her mother appeared to reassure people she was fine. Several people speculated that her behavior was due to a mental breakdown, abuse, or that she had a drug problem. Claims that Marina insisted were not true. However, the more cynical believed it to be a publicity stunt that she intentionally made in order to gain more viewers. And as such, it worked, as Marina Joyce gained around three times the subscribers she had prior to this viral sensation, and ended up having over two million subscribers by the time it was over. After the incident, Marina carried on with her videos and they went back to their usual 30 to 100,000 views. However, on March the 30th, 2017, Marina uploaded a video titled Saving Marina Joyce, in which she explained what was going on back in 2016. Although strangely, she didn't actually explain anything at all, and probably left her viewers with more questions than answers. What we can deem from it is that she was suffering from depression and maybe made some reckless choices, although there was no real explanation. Nevertheless, this video got nearly 3 million views as of 2020. Marina then went back to posting her videos and everything seemed fine, but this wasn't the end of the saga. On August 9th, 2019, UK organization Missing People's Twitter declared Marina Joyce as missing since July 31st, last seen in Harringay, London. No further information was given, and her last interaction with social media at the time was on June 24th in a Twitter post promoting her merchandise. The next day, on August 10th, 2019, the local police's Twitter page reported that Marina had been found alive and well. Two months later, Marina claimed that she was never missing at all, and that her boyfriend Brandon is the only outsider to trust about her whereabouts. Fans quickly pointed out the suspicious wording and are still certain that foul play was involved in her short disappearance. The latest revelation prompted her video, How I Care For My Hair, posted 10 days before her alleged disappearance to rack up over 1 million views. Now, we're not saying all this is a stunt to get views, and we wish Marina well, especially if she is genuinely struggling with her mental health, but it does make you question what is really going on, and you can see how many people have interpreted the whole thing as a publicity stunt. We can't judge either way, and would like to hear your thoughts on the incident. Mexico is one of the most dangerous countries on the planet in which to practice journalism particularly on the topics of organized crime and drug trafficking. Since 2000, nearly 100 journalists have been kidnapped or killed in the country just for doing their job, and sadly many of the killings remain unsolved and unpunished. With such a high level of violence and attacks on the press, many local media outlets have been forced to downplay their coverage of criminal activity. The injustice of this situation is thought to be the reason that on the 1st of January 2012, an anonymous user founded the Facebook page Valor por Tamaulipas. The page reported security updates in the Mexican state of Tamaulipas. Its goal was to share information with other social media users on drug-related violence and risk situations all across the state. It routinely posted messages and photos of crime scenes on its page with images of alleged criminals, updates on abandoned vehicles, roadblocks, arsons, drug traffickers, and an array of other criminal activity. Because of high levels of drug-related crime in northern Mexico, many Facebook users started checking the site to see in real time if there was any danger in the area. Eventually, social media users in the United States and other countries around the world started following the reports. The site enraged crime lords so much that in early 2013, a Mexican drug trafficking organization issued leaflets offering a ward of 600,000 pesos for anyone that could give out information about the administrator of the page. The administrator, however, was openly defiant of the threat and continued posting updates, stating he would continue his crime reporting on the Facebook page even if it might cost him his life. He also asked his visitors to refrain from using their personal Facebook or Twitter accounts when uploading information to the page since that could put them at risk too. Although he must have taken the threat seriously, as his wife and children reportedly fled to the United States for security reasons. 
Over the next year or so, the administrator repeatedly stated his intention to quit the page, but then seemed to have a change of heart and carried on. The final straw came on October 15th, 2014, when a collaborator of the Facebook page was kidnapped, tortured and killed by alleged organized crime members. His captors allegedly posted several tweets on her profile. One of the tweets said the following, close your account, don't risk your families the way I did. I ask you all for forgiveness, and included two photos of her. One of them showed her alive, and the second one showed her corpse. Shortly after the shocking incident, on the 29th of November 2014, the administrator of the Facebook page announced his retirement from social media. He posted on the Facebook page that he could not continue because of his inability to manage the page properly. He stated that he was leaving the page for personal reasons, but that it would continue under new management. In a closing statement, he bid farewell by thanking God for bringing happiness to his personal and professional life. In the comments section of the Facebook post, many people thanked him for his support. The man who created this Facebook page has never been identified and put his life and those of his family on the line to try and help the local community and the surrounding areas in the fight against criminal gangs and drug trafficking. So that's five creepy YouTube channels, websites, and online mysteries. We'd love to hear your thoughts on these. And again, if you enjoy our videos, please consider supporting on Patreon for just $2 per month to get exclusive access to videos that we do not post on YouTube. Thanks for watching and for your support. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.